Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, call Halal, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give a double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, just back in the spirit of another lesson. And basically, how all of these athletes are not back in Kyrie Irving. Everybody's basically trying to protect their own bag. It seems like we live in a world now to where our people, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you worship money, you know, which the scriptures talk about uh, mammon, which refers to money, and our people treat money as an idol. That's why you have a lot of these rappers and different entertainers and stuff. They'll be on Instagram and these other social media platforms uh, posting uh, photos with uh, cash, bundles of cash, acting like it's a, it's a money phone, you know? So our people have a deep infatuation for money. And there's nothing wrong with, with getting money and substance and, and adding to your, 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 your situation. But it turns into idolatry when you put that above serving and doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So in this lesson, I just want to touch into how that's really characteristics of Esau, Edom, and chiefly Amalek, because that's the chief house of Satan. That's the top uh, tribe within the nation of Edom, you, you Amalekites, the, the ones who no one can dare criticize or you'll lose your money. You know, that's what it's, it's basically coming to. That's what everybody's starting to see. If you criticize a certain group of people, then your whole livelihood is jeopardized and put at stake. And for a lot of our people, instead of having integrity and having a backbone, they'll rather just compromise any standard to, to, get, to keep that money bag going. But I'm going to just get a few scriptures, Lord willing, through the spirit that's to edify. I'm going to start off here in Proverbs 12 and 26. It says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. So Israel, you, you 12 tribes, you were created to be the righteous people on the planet Earth. You were created to be a holy and separate people because why? The Most High gave us laws to abide by as a nation. That's what made us clean and sanctified compared uh, to the other heathen nations round about. And we know that the wicked is the, the nation of Edom. You read Hebrew Edomites who uh, self-proclaimed themselves as white people. Job 9 and 24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So we know we can clearly identify who the wicked is. It says the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. So the wicked that control the planet at this appointed time, they've seduced even our own people, you Israelites, into doing wickedly, into selling out, into compromising and not having integrity and worshiping money, man. Over worshiping the heavenly father who gives all things. Because I'm, I'm just continuing to reiterate on sentiments I've, I've spoken on concerning this Kyrie Irving situation. And I'm not treating Kyrie as a prophet, but the Lord shows us and uses certain examples just to, 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 to basically bring things to, to mind, so to speak. You know, it's basically showing with the Kyrie Irving situation that these guys... That's ex or athletes and entertainers and stuff. They don't have no backbone. They worship money at the end of the day, man. They don't have no uh, integrity. No standard of morality. They'll stab their brother in the back for money. Because even LeBron James, like at one point, I thought that Kyrie would possibly end up leaving the Brooklyn Nets and going to the Lakers. But after the, 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 the latest throwing under the bus by this guy, LeBron James. He basically uh, just kicking a man while he down, you know? It's just sad to see, man, you know? But the stars uh, are falling down, you know? The so-called stars of this society, they're being brought low. You know, all of these entertainers, these athletes, everybody, they're being exposed for who they are as well. So it's beautiful what's happening right now, you know, in, in the current times. But I want to get this real quick. This is Ecclesiastes 
7 and 7, it says, Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. So those that are wise, we know that we're oppressed. We're one of all things to our enemy. Behold, yet this day we're in our captivity. I'm loosely paraphrasing Baruch the third chapter when you read in the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha is a part of the original 1611 King James Bible. But it says Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, surely oppression or slavery. It says surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. So we're not supposed to be cool with the current situation we in as a people, because even though we don't have physical shackles and chains, the nation of Israel, we're still in oppression. We're still subject to our enemy. And those that are found wise. They acknowledge that fact. In fact, the men of the Lord, we're proclaiming and we're confessing that fact. And that's why the powers to be, the oppressor, he's big mad right now. Because we're putting a, the, the, the scopeo on the wicked. And pointing out the fact that the Lord's people have been oppressed, man. And that situation, it makes you mad, man. You know, we're not happy with the state of our people, man. Being subject to the damn devil. Having to go according to his standard. It says, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart. So here's really the point I wanted to get in that, that precept. It says a gift destroyeth the heart. So our people have been pacified with all of these goodies. Like the apostle Ramlab used to say, all these goodies. They've been getting all of these little trinkets and gifts. You know, which this fiat currency... This paper money, it's whatever they tell you it is, man. You know, because the dollar is nothing but a measurement. It's supposed to be a measurement of silver and gold. The dollar is not real money. All of the monies, uh, the so-called money in the bank account, a digital account. Esau, at any time, he could freeze your account. He could, he could make that go away as he pleases, man. It says a gift destroyed the heart. So just because our people have been getting these and these gifts They've been, they've been incentivized to not have a standard, to not have any integrity or morals. Niggas will do anything for money, man. It's sad. And you got Israelites that are doing anything for money, and it's being exposed as well. IUIC, they come uh, to mind uh, 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 you know, at the first of the list, so to speak, because we, we know that they're under the 501c3 charter. They're basically trying to get all of these, these goodies, these gifts. But it says a gift destroyeth the heart because certain gifts, man, it, it basically takes your your uh, your level of servitude of the most high way. Then you start to focus on money and how you can get more money, which getting money in of itself. That's not a bad thing. I'm not here to say that for anybody that's enterprising. They got a business that's uh, trying to uh, increase their earning potential. Hey, go for it. I'm not saying that, but. To treat money as an idol, to treat money as a god, that's when you're going off. Because the Most High creates all things, man. And we know that true substance is uh, actual resources. Land, cattle, silver, and gold. That's how the scriptures describe our forefather Abram. Abraham, you know, his name was changed from Abram to Abraham. But that's how the scriptures classified Abraham as being rich. He had actual substance. And not paper money or just numbers, digital numbers in an account, you know. But I'm going to jump down just to prove the point that, you know, money in and of itself is not bad. But worshiping money, that's when you're going off. That's when you become an enemy of the most high. You, you, put, you treat money as a God and you put a, another power before the heavenly father, Yahweh. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12, it says, for wisdom is a defense. And we always quote Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You know, riches are not going to save in the day of tribulation. That's what the scripture says, I believe, in Proverbs. So wisdom is the is the really the, 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 the most important line of defense. It says, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. So I do have to acknowledge money is also a defense. You need money to live, to sustain yourself. So I'm not by any means telling nobody 
not to try to make or increase your money, but to worship and just give full devotion to money and just to backstab your brother and lie and cheat and steal, rob, just doing all of these wicked things to get money. Then you're going off. You're not using the first line of defense, which is wisdom. I'll read it again. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12, it says, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. And most of our people that don't have wisdom are the heavenly father. You know. Our people are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. You know, they don't have no knowledge of the heavenly father. So even uh, some of these entertainers and athletes and stuff. The Lord will have it to where they'll make large sums of money. And then five, 10 years later, they're dead broke. Because why? They, they, they weren't given wisdom to know how to manage and um, basically maintain their money and turn it into wealth. You know, but the true riches is the, the, the scriptures, if I can say. Matter of fact, I'm going to get this real quick. Real impromptu scripture Because the real money Is having the, the wisdom, knowledge And understanding of the heavenly father Via the holy scriptures This is Romans 11 and 33 It says, oh the depth of the riches Both of the wisdom and knowledge Of the most high How unsearchable are his Are his judgment and his ways Past finding out So it talks about the riches of the wisdom and knowledge Of the most high So that's the real money if you have wisdom of the heavenly father and his son, you're going to know how to make money. You're going to know how to enterprise and increase your earnings, man. That's why the scripture says in Matthew 18 or Matthew 6, Matthew the 6th chapter, it says, Seek ye the kingdom first and all things shall be added unto thee. So you're supposed to seek wisdom of the heavenly father. And then if he wants you to be rich and have substance, he's going to give you abundantly, man. But these Jakes in the world, they got the they got their priorities misaligned. But I'm going to go to the next scripture. <clears throat> this is first Timothy six and seven. It says. Matter of fact, I'll start at six. It's first Timothy six and six. It says, but godliness with intentment is great gain. So we're supposed to be content. The main thing, like it says, but godliness, meaning being righteous, having a, a, a standard of, 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 of morals to live by, integrity, honor. That's what you're supposed to have. First, King Solomon, the first thing he asked when he was put up in position of king was wisdom to judge such a great people, the nation of Israel. And then the Lord was pleased at that request by King Solomon that he gave him all things. Back in 1 Timothy 6 and 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So we're supposed to be content in the things that the Most High gives us. You know, just the basic thing, the basic necessities of life. It says, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Because even them damn Hamites, those Egyptians, they, you know, they show... Uh, Pictures I've seen, you know, where they burying, you know, the, the, the pharaohs and stuff with the damn uh, gold and, 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 and money and stuff like that, which is all vain because somebody could just dig up your, your burial and just come take it. You know, it says for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. So having food, clothing, a shelter over your head, man. You know, your, your good state of health. We should be content with those basic things. And if the most high add more, hey, then so be it. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Continuing on. 1 Timothy 6 and 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, which is a trap. A snare is a trap. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. And that's why the scripture says it's easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
Now, it doesn't say that it's impossible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but it's, it's, it's very difficult. Why? Because when you're rich, you fall into temptations and snares, different traps, man. It says, verse 10, here's the point, 1 Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. So just to clarify, because some people like to say we bring things out out of context and we're twisting up the scriptures and we basically tell our people to be bums. We don't teach no bum doctrine. We teach our people to excel in all things. But you got to keep the priority first. We, we are about the service of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah first. So money in of itself is, is not wicked. Making money, trying to merchandise and, and, and get businesses to, to increase your substance. There's nothing wrong with them, them, those things in, in of itself. But it says here, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So that's clear to the point. The love of money, that's the root of all evil. Basically treat money like it's a God. You worship in money. You'll sell your soul to get some damn money. A lot of our people, they're going to take the you know what. That it talks about in Revelation, the 13th chapter, because we you ain't, you're not going to be able to buy or sell without it. So they're going to basically compromise their soul just for the love of money. It says for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So people, once they get into that love of money, you are always coveting. And envying what the next man has. You always uh, watching what the next person uh, obtains and trying to match them or overdo them. And it says they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows, man. Because at the end of the day, when you have a love of money and you're willing just to compromise your morals and integrity and sell your soul, you're left empty at the end of the day. You don't have no purpose at the end of the day. So with all being said, you know, it's nothing wrong with getting money. But as we see by a lot of these industry clowns from you entertainers in Hollywood, Hollyweird, you damn uh, new age gladiators of Rome, you, you athletes, whether it be the NBA, the NFL, MLB. A lot of you dudes worship money, man. You love your oppressor, man. You'll sell out your own damn uh, uh, family and, and whoever, you know, that may appear close to you to get some damn money to sustain those riches. But we know that riches, I quoted it earlier, riches, riches profit not in the day of tribulation. So the times that we're coming into now, it don't, it don't matter how much money you got. If you don't have a personal relationship with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, if you don't have wisdom and knowledge through faith in Yahweh Shah, you're going to be through. So with all being said, I just want to put up a quick lesson and, and just speak on that. Lord willing and certified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Wakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.